Hey guys! Welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Kimberly. I'm a second year medical student studying in Lee Kong Chin School of Medicine in NTU Singapore. So today's video, I wanted to talk about how to get into NTU Medicine, the application procedure, the documents that you need, and what to expect of the application procedure in general. So I'll be covering a few different things and I'll leave the timestamps below. You can check them out and you can skip to different parts if that's what you wish. Section one, point number one, your academic results. Yes, the cutoff point is likely going to be around 87.5, which means you have to aim for about four A's and one B in, in terms of A-level standards. According to the school's website, they say you need a good pass in chemistry and either physics or biology. So yes, you don't actually need to take biology to get into medical school. You can take physics. In fact, my cohort, I think about 30% of my friends are physics students and they are all really smart. I think taking biology in JC is not a prerequisite, mostly because it doesn't really give you that much of a head start. At most, it covers like the first three weeks of lessons and then after that, everyone's at the same starting point. The, it makes no difference whether or not you started in, uh, whether you learned physics or bio in JC. So don't worry too much about it. Okay, so section number two is going to be about the BMAT or the Biomedical Admissions Test. Unlike NUS, NTU Medicine has this additional criteria in their application procedure, mainly because the school is a collaboration between NTU Medicine and Imperial College London. So most of our systems actually follow the Imperial system. This includes our curriculum, uh, exams, and even like entry requirements. So I won't really get into the details of the BMAT test itself because I think that there are many people online who have explained it way better than me and can explain it way better than I can. And to be perfectly honest, my BMAT score wasn't the best. It was okay, and it was, I guess, just enough for me to get in. But I'm not a stellar student when it comes to the BMAT test. The only piece of advice I can give you is remember to apply. Because the applications close in September, and the test is in October. And it's very, very close to A-levels. So manage your time properly because it cuts really close. If I'm not wrong, that time when I took my BMAT test, it was literally the Friday before GP paper. Like, it was one weekend before GP. So juggle your subjects well. It's a bit expensive, it's a bit pricey, I will admit. It was like a few hundred dollars for the test and it doesn't even guarantee you to enter the school. But if you don't take the test, you can't even register to enter the school. So I think it's still better to take it and not score well enough than to not take it at all and never get the opportunity to even apply for the school. Also another thing to note is that if you're a bio student, the BMAT test section 2 also includes physics, which means you have to go and revise your secondary school physics. It doesn't test JC bio knowledge, it tests secondary school bio knowledge. Okay, on to the third point, which is the personal statement. Now this one I underratedly think is the most important part of your entire application. I kid you not, this is really the make or break point because there are people who have amazing BMAT scores and amazing A-level scores or IB scores or whatever that don't even get an offer for an interview. So in 300 words of less, you have to convince the school why you are a suitable candidate. And typically this will include things like why you want to join medical school, why you want to study medicine, why you want to be a doctor, what experiences did you have that made you suddenly feel so inspired to be a doctor. There are many different ways to write personal statements. I personally just talked about how I was always interested in science from a very, very young age. It would also be good to talk about what qualities you have that would make you a good doctor. So things like leadership, teamwork, other soft skills like time management, communication. It would be really good for you to elaborate on different experiences, different events that you've held in order to really prove your point. Oh, other things that you can talk about would be things like having a good support system. So you can mention things like how your family is really supportive, your friends are really supportive and understanding about having stress from school, heavy workload. And you can also talk about the ways you relieve stress. So for example, reading, running, 
music I don't know you do you but it shows the school that you are capable and prepared to handle the stresses of medical school and becoming a doctor in the future one point I want to add is that please 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 do not lie in your personal statement the school will bring it up during your interviews and if they catch on to your life be real work within your means i know some of you might be concerned that oh my portfolio doesn't have that many projects i didn't do that many leadership roles i don't have anything to talk about you can <laughs> there are always ways to pull out things that you have done you can talk about how you took initiative in different different scenarios different projects different group works and just expand on how those experiences make you feel and how you learn from those experiences. It would still work. Okay, the next point would be on referee reports. Now for NTU, you need two referee reports and one of them must be your civics tutor. So my piece of advice, please ask them early, really, really, really early. Your teachers will be swarmed by students who will be asking them to write reports for university. So please, ask them early maybe even as early as like beginning of j2 or even halfway through j2 i think it would be a good time to start asking your teachers so for ntu itself the school will be sending you a link to a online survey that you have to forward to your teachers and then they will just fill it out and submit to the school directly you don't have to really intervene after that so some of my friends back in jc were concerned that when they wanted to apply for medical school they would need a science teacher for example a bio teacher or chemistry teacher to write the second report that is actually not the case any teacher that has a good connection with you and can give you an honest report on how good you are as a student and how good you are as a person can be a pretty good referee. It doesn't actually have to be the science teacher. Okay, so those are the main things that you will need for entry into NTU medicine. Now I'll talk about some extra stuff that is not quite as important, but maybe you want to take note. One thing would be the health requirements. So the school does make it mandatory for you to have double doses of certain vaccines. For example, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and I think varicella zoster also known as chicken pox. So check your health records. Don't worry too much if you don't have both doses before school starts. The school will take note of what doses you have and don't have enough of and they will arrange for you to go to the university clinic to get the extra shots if you need to. Okay so the last thing I want to talk about in terms of registering is another pathway where you can enter into medicine also known as the non-academic entry. If some of you are concerned that maybe your A-level scores didn't reach the cutoff point, like you're very close but not there, or your BMAT scores are kind of questionable at best, if that's the case, you can try to apply by the non-academic pathway. This takes into account people who have exceptional portfolios like good leadership, research papers, Olympiads, what else? Oh yes, uh, winning medals, for example, for your CCA, exceptional, I don't know, music performances or sports performances. If you have any kind of exceptional achievements in these areas, you can use it as your platform to apply into the school. However, I will admit that this pathway is quite difficult to get into the school because it really is for people who have exceptional talents. And I mean like distinctions, gold medals, you need to have like published research papers, really, really good leadership records, like working in organizations or stuff like that. Simply being a leader in your CCA or something, I don't really think will cut it. You can still try, but from what I understand, it has to be some really exceptional talent. And now we've gotten to the final part, which is the interview. To put things simply, if you manage to get an interview, firstly, congratulations. Secondly, the interview is going to be a MMI. These will be station interviews where you will be asked different questions by different teachers. Sometimes it's a face-to-face -face interview, while others might be role-playing scenario, for instance. I think one of the years you had to act as a doctor and then they had hired actors come in and play a difficult patient and you needed to go and comfort them or break bad news to them. One last point I want to add about the interviews is that there are many many question banks with thousands of different possible scenarios and questions where you can go and prepare yourself and test yourself and quiz yourself in order to prepare for this interview. So I highly encourage you 
to take the time to go and prepare for any kind of scenario you might face. If you're curious, I will link the one that I used down below in the description. It was really really good and I used it for both my NUS interview and my NTU interview. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you found this useful in any way. Please subscribe. <laughs> I intend to make more videos like this in the future, maybe talking more about curriculum, exams, and what life is like as an NTU medicine student. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.